Hello, and welcome to another retro digital camera video. This time, we have a camera purchased from Facebook Marketplace. Found for a relatively good price, and complete in box, is the Sony MHS PM1. You can also find this camera as the Sony Webby HD, or labeled as the Sony Mobile HD Snap camera, like it is in the manual. This little mini camcorder was released in three different colors back in 2009 for a retail price of around 170 US dollars. This one was apparently purchased from a Sony style store as a gift in 2009. When it came out, it was the first pocket camcorder that offered 1080p video recording while most of its competitors were still shooting 720p. Not bad though when you remember this was the time of the iPhone 3GS, with its 3 megapixel camera and its ability to shoot standard definition 480p. We will come back to the video quality later though. Being made mostly of plastic, it's quite lightweight, but does feel solid and comfortable to hold with good build quality that you would expect from Sony. Starting at the back of the device, you'll mostly just find different logos and information about the camera. The mic is situated at the top here as well. The left side has the speaker grill and a flap that covers the connectors. These include video out and USB for data transfer only. No USB charging here. The right side houses the power button, along with a menu button, and a button that doubles as resolution settings and delete. On the bottom is a standard tripod mount and the cover for the battery. This one is a Sony K battery. This is also where you'll find the Memory Stick Duo. No SD card support on this one. Flip it over and you'll find the sharp 1.8 inch 240p LCD. The screen is very clear with good colors and decent viewing angles. Brightness is pretty good too, though it can be hard to see under direct sunlight. Under the screen is a small zoom rocker for the 2x digital zoom, sandwiched between the buttons for taking a picture or movie. Below that is the playback button, a button for Sony's proprietary software, and a 5-way joystick for navigating menus. Up at the top of the camera, is one of its main features, the swiveling lens. The camera can be stored with the lens closed and covered, and when rotated, will automatically turn on ready to shoot. You can then continue to rotate the lens up to 270 degrees to take videos of yourself. The lens can be flipped around even while recording, and the video will automatically rotate when the lens is flipped to keep itself upright. The lens itself is f3.6, not the brightest aperture, with an equivalent focal length of about 42mm for photos, and a slightly tighter 47mm for video. There is no autofocus here with the lens fixed to have everything in focus from about 1 meter to infinity. There are also no controls for exposure, other than a few scenes you can select from. ISO, shutter speed, and white balance are controlled automatically. The only other option you can change is the photo and video resolution.
The distant minimum focus distance combined with the fairly narrow field of view actually makes it quite difficult to film yourself without using a tripod or selfie stick. This is what video looks like when you're trying to record yourself. My arm is fully stretched out. Over the last few days, I took the Sony MHS PM1 out with me on a few adventures to get some test photos and video. The first thing you'll notice about the video is the lack of any sort of stabilization. At least there's the tripod mount if you want steady video. When recording at 1080p, it's actually a bit of a stretched resolution. This camera records a more square 1440 by 1080 by using not square pixels, so it covers a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This was a fairly common practice with early HD media. All resolutions will record at 30 frames per second. Despite its hampered resolution, and the fact this camera is 14 years old, there was a decent amount of detail in the video when shooting outdoors in bright light. Video is still acceptable when zooming in to two times, despite it only being a digital zoom. Auto exposure worked well enough, though it did overexpose at times. Colors were also pretty accurate to my eyes. No complaints from me there. While the quality doesn't hold up to a modern smartphone, I was still impressed with how it looked, and was expecting much worse when I originally purchased it. Skits. Indoor video didn't look too bad either, and the camera did a decent job keeping the noise down in most settings, with only a small loss of detail in a dimly lit room. Are you in your box, Y.E.? When it comes to photos, the Webby HD is capable of taking 5 megapixel still images. More than most cell phones at the time, but still less than compact point-and-shoots that were around 10 megapixels. Colors were vibrant and accurate with a good amount of sharpness to the image under good lighting, though it still tended to overexpose just a bit. 5 megapixels is quite low, especially for today's standard, so pictures aren't going to be very large. When zoomed in to 100%, things do look a little pixelated, but you can still see a good amount of detail. When lighting drops a bit, or clouds roll in, as they do in most days in Newfoundland, the colors will suffer a bit with a bit less vibrancy. Indoor photos are not a strong point for this camera. There is no built-in flash so you'll end up with more motion blur from low shutter speeds and more noise. It's gonna take you a few tries to get a decent cat photo. Even though this camera is over a decade old, the Sony Webby HD can still produce usable results in photo and video. I was pleasantly surprised by the quality and really have no complaints when it comes to this little camera. It works great, is very simple to use, and is small and light enough to put in a pocket and take anywhere. This would have made a great gift back in 2009, and I still think it's worth picking up today if you can find it for a decent price. It might take me a while to find another little camera, but if you do like content like this, a sub would be greatly appreciated. There is more content like this on the way as my collections of old digicams grows. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.